Hi everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today, we're gonna to be working on this customized Honda CL360 Scrambler. And we're gonna show you how to diagnose ignition problems. All right, so here's the situation. Your bike was running well, and then all of a sudden, it started running really poorly. Chances are you're having the ignition problem and you need to diagnose it. So we're gonna start the diagnostic with some of the bigger questions, and then we start to hone down on the smaller potential part problems to figure out what's going on. The key here is to figure out what is right versus what is wrong, because once we know what's right, we can eliminate those variables from the equation and hone in on the problem more specifically. Some of the tools you're gonna to need to help with the diagnostic are gonna be a test light, and uh, this is just a jumper, which is a wire with two alligator clips on it. Uh, must have to the toolbox in diagnosing electrical problems. So the very first big thing I'm gonna address is, is the bike getting power? Is my battery good? Real simple test. Now this bike happens to be customized, the battery happens to be in the back here versus right here. Doesn't matter, same test applies. I got my test light handy, I'm gonna hook my alligator clip to my negative terminal, touch the positive, see if it turns on. That means my battery's got power. Next, I'm gonna to go to the key switch, turn on the key, let's see if all the other things on the bike kick on. The horn works, the headlight, gauge lights, things like that, to see if we're getting power through the system. The second major thing we're gonna check out is to see if the bike is running on all of its cylinders. With the bike and engine cold, start the bike and let it run for a little bit. During that first 30 to 45 seconds of it running, grab the exhaust pipes right by the cylinder head. If they're getting warm, that means it's firing on that cylinder. If it stays cold, that means that cylinder is dead. The third thing we're gonna check is if we're getting spark to every one of the cylinders on the bike. To do this, remove the spark plug from each cylinder, insert the spark plug back into the boot, touch the spark plug body against the cylinder head, turn on the power, and kick the bike over you should see a spark happening at every single spark plug. Okay. Yeah. If you don't see a spark on a particular plug, that means we're gonna dive deeper into the ignition system to see what the problem could be. So that's the points, the condenser, the spark plug, the spark plug boots, the ignition coil, and the wires that connect everything in between. Now the issue could be one or many of these parts combined. So we're gonna to try to figure out which ones are working correctly and we're gonna show you how to test each one. So the first thing we're gonna check is gonna be the spark plugs. Now generally spark plugs don't go bad, but they can occasionally. More commonly they foul out due to oil or rich mixture. It's just gonna be easier to go ahead and replace the spark plugs with a new one because it's cheap and quick. The second thing we're gonna check is the spark plug boots. Take a small screwdriver and insert it into the boot where it's making contact on the inside. Get it close to the cylinder head and crank the engine over to see if you're getting spark. If you're not getting spark here, Remove the boot from the plug wire and check the wire at the cylinder head. The third part we're gonna look at is the condenser. Now condensers wear out and should be changed regularly. And if your bike's having a hard time accelerating past about 5K, then you might have a bad condenser. They're tough to check statically, but we can do it on the bike running. If you look at the left point as the bike's running, you see a spark happening at the contacts. That spark indicates that that side of the condenser is bad. We're gonna unplug, reverse the connections, and see if the problem moves over to the right side. And sure enough, it does. So that's how you know you have a bad condenser. So the fourth thing we're gonna check is the continuity of the ignition points and the wires that connect the point to the coils for a good circuit. We're gonna connect the test light to the positive side of the battery and disconnect both sets of points from the coils. We're gonna to touch the test light lead to the end of each points wire and manually trigger the points open and close. Do note, the points have to be closed and touching for this test to work. You may have to rotate the engine so the points are closed. If the light is not on or triggering, that means there could be some dirt between the points. A little bit of sandpaper in between will help get that cleaned up quick. So the fifth thing we're gonna check is gonna be the ignition coils. And we have a two-step test process. The first process is to check power and continuity through the coils. Turn on the power of the bike, 
Make sure the kill switch is set to on. Connect your test light to ground on the engine and touch the lead of the test light to the ends of each coil wire. Also check to see that the coils are getting power from the kill switch. This is done at the black and white wires. The second test we're gonna do is to check for intermittency on the coil. Now this can be done when the bike is running and the coil is under load. Loosely set the spark plug cap on the spark plug and have the bike running. When you remove the cap, the RPMs of the bike should drop, which means that cylinder isn't firing. If you can put the cap on and off and the RPM does not change, it means that the coil is not firing that spark plug under load. If this is the case, chances are you have an intermittent coil. So I hope this video has helped you figure out how to test the various parts in the ignition system so you can troubleshoot what's going on with your bike. Again, this is Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to us right here on this YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time.